Radium E becomes the first radioactive element to be made synthetically. A tornado hits Tupelo, Mississippi, killing 216 people and injuring 700 more, making it the fourth deadliest tornado in United States history and the British liner, luxury liner. Queen Mary makes her maiden voyage across the Atlantic. The year is 1936, and this four-door deluxe sedan model 68 V8 was on offer over at Ford, but... Before getting into all of it, I'm your host, Jay. Welcome to What It's Like, the automotive channel that shows you these cars like you've never seen them before. History, specs, design, we post between four and five episodes each week with engine episodes generally on Wednesdays. If any of that sounds of interest to you, subscribe and hit the bell icon next to it to never miss a video. A couple of announcements real quick before getting into all of it. So it's come to my attention in the comment section. I just wanted to address this publicly. I have no control over the advertisements that are placed on the videos. There's a lot of political advertisements. This channel is not affiliated with any party. Um, and it'll never be. This is an automotive channel. I'm staying neutral. It's going to be like that from here on out. And the reason I'm staying neutral is pretty obvious. Everybody has their own opinion. I don't really care what your opinion is, and you guys don't care what my opinion is. So it's just better off that way. Two, so today's Wednesday, which would be Engine Episode Wednesday. The Engine Episode that I'm trying to cook up for you guys is a rare one. Super interesting. Found out about it while researching last week's episode. I can't find enough information on it. And I don't normally do this, but I'm going to ask you guys for help. If you guys can give me any information, any information at all, on Faro as a company. So let me tell you a little bit about this engine because it's, it's pretty remarkable. It was made in either 1915 or 1916, and it was produced, I don't know when they stopped producing it, but Faro was a company much like Continental, and they built engines for various other companies. Jackson used this engine as well as Script Booth both use this engine. They made three different versions. They made a 35 horsepower version, a 48 horsepower version, and a 60 horsepower version for both car and marine applications. I can't find any information on the 60 horsepower version. So if you guys have any information, any information at all, it would be greatly appreciated. I'm sure that everybody here in the community will totally dig it. And, and I'll give you guys credit. If you have any information to give, uh, shoot me an email at what underscore it's underscore like at yahoo.com 1936 Ford model lineup was broken down into two series the series 48 and the series 68 Ford also offered wagons passenger wagons sedan delivery and a truck line going from half ton all the way up to the big commercial the Ford series 68 could be had in body styles such as but not limited to five window coupe cabriolet Coupe, two-door sedan, four-door sedan, wagon, convertible sedan, two-door touring sedan, and four-door touring sedan. The model series 68 as well as the series 48 could also be had in two different trim levels, standard and deluxe. The deluxe models got more bright work around the windshield, headlights, grille, dual chrome mirrors, polished side spears, blue dot taillights, Dual horns. Options included, but not limited to, radio, radio antenna, heater, electric clock, leather upholstery, wind wings, dual wipers. Let's talk specs. 182.8 inches long, 68.6 inches tall. It rides a wheelbase of 112 inches. It weighs 2750 pounds. Price $623, which would be equivalent to you spending $14,131.84 in year 2024. Total 1936 Ford production was 930,778 units, of which 536,615 were the Model 68 variety. And of that number, 159,825 were deluxe four-door sedans. Moving on to engine, only one engine on offer, 221 cubic inch displacement flathead V8. 3.6 liters. It was good for 85 horsepower, 3,800 RPM with an estimated 153 pound-feet 
or 207 newton meters at 2200 rpm with a bore of 3.1 inches and a stroke of 3.8 inches compression was 6.3 to 1 with three main bearings backed to a three-speed manual transmission if you're in the market for a 1936 ford four-door sedan deluxe I know a place where one is for sale. Actually, this car, our featured car, is currently for sale at John Kufleitner's Galleria of Prestine and Vintage Classic Cars out in Salem, Ohio. If you're ever out in Salem, Ohio, be sure to check this place out where they have this car as well as a bunch of other cars for sale currently. They also have shipping, transportation, and financing options available for hours of operation, directions, and to get the full scoop on this car, be sure to click the link below after the show. Let's talk styling, starting with the bumpers. Look at how they're just curved around. There are two grooves inside the bumpers. Bump, two bumper rets and or overriders, which also have the grooves in them. at how these bumpers are connected to the car two smaller grills I would assume the horns are behind those grills it's kind of sort of what it looks like but we'll find out when we open the hood for sure the hole in the center is for the crank if you want to hand crank your car beautiful headlight buckets also notice the headlights are recessed in this bucket ever so slight with nice stainless around there is an ever so slight crease in the fender just look at how those fenders are designed and how they flow back into the running board section Gorgeous V8 badge here in the front. This car has a center line, more or less for the hinge for the butterfly hood. This one has artillery wheels, which I absolutely love. It's one of my favorite wheel designs. V8, nice and proud there in the hubcap. The fenders aren't flared, but they're rolled underneath. The running boards are pretty thick in the front. Here's my size 12 shoe for reference. They taper in the back quite drastically. Same shoe. Notice it's a single piece windshield where the windshield wipers are mounted to the top and they follow the windshield wipers do. Notice there's a bar that connects the two. Cowl vent. The mirrors are mounted to the door itself. This car does not have drip rails. Instead, it's like flared out. Also notice how the windows are. They're kind of dished in. As well as the beautiful canary yellow pinstriping. This car is laser straight. The rear fenders are rolled as well. They do come back here to a point. The rear brake lights, as well as gas filler. The, the bumpers back here mimic the front bumpers. Two overriders and or bumperettes. Has this dip here in the center as well. Nice spare tire in the back, which is in this case. This car has a built-in trunk.
which is a pretty good sized trunk all things considered the only downer is is you got to pick it up to almost your chest if you're six foot tall to put it in back here but it is big So the door will open 90 degrees to allow plenty of access to get into the cabin. It's got mohair on the door panels. Also look at how framed out this door is. It has rubber. Door handle to get out. Window crank for the big window. Operates like this. And it does go all the way down. You could use this as an armrest or you could use the actual armrest is an armrest but notice it's angled up clutch brake gas pedal just take a look at this interior here is what over the hood looks like here's what first person over the hood would look like on to the button switches and knobs, starting on the left and moving right. Oil pressure, gasoline gauge, 100 mile per hour speedometer. Notice that all of the numbers are going the same way. Odometer at the top, trip odometer at the bottom. Coolant temperature gauge, amp meter, hand throttle, which could be used as a primitive cruise control. Choke, lighter, radio would be in center if they opted for it. Up above, there are sun visors. They look like this. They're pretty, pretty good size sun visor, as well as the windshield wiper mechanism is up here as well. There is a small oval shaped rear view mirror, as well as another sun visor for the passenger. This doohickey right here cranks out the windshield, which is the best air conditioning unit that you could ever have. I will say though, if you pass a truck, if a tractor trailers coming this way at you your car almost feels like a parachute because it catches all that wind that comes off that truck this right here is for the headlights one way it does the high beams and the other way it does the low beams unless they moved it to this that's the starter this is a key locking cylinder right now it's off but if you turned it on you wouldn't be able to move the steering wheel other cool thing about this is steering wheel turns around it the center stays stationary a lot of people think that just the Edsel did that but this car does it too see how the steering wheel will move and the middle of the hub stays stationary on to the glove box test. Here is our test subject. Here is my hand for reference. Here is the glove box in question. It's worth mentioning that this glove box doesn't lock, but it is absolutely massive. And the reason I show this is because a lot of times these glove boxes are absolutely huge, just like this one, but they're made of metal and they're felt, generally they're felt, they're lined with felt. You could put ice packs in this, park in the shade, put your lunch in there, and I could bet you that it'd be cold. Put a purse in there if it locks. Camera fits in the glove box and the glove box shuts. Notice there's no armrests on the door panel itself. Door handle to get out, window crank for the big window, which operates like this. Goes all the way down. Just take a look at this interior. Nice robe rail on the back of the seat for a heavy blanket. Notice down here, this is a footrest. It's raked up. Tiny transmission tunnel. This is how much space there is for entry of the rear. Here is what the front looks like from the back. Let's take a quick gander at the greenhouse or the pillar to glass ratio in this car. And it's a bit cozy, but I think that's the way that this car was intended to be. 
out the back window. That's what visibility looks like out from the back seat, out the back window. Parcel shelf in the back. Armrests are on the chair itself. Creature comforts back here. There is a dome light in center, as well as a robe rail for a nice heavy blanket. Just above the robe rail is an ashtray. Grab handle to hold on to. There are vent windows back here. Which open like this. And I, I think that there's nothing classier than vent windows in the back. It's such a classy feature. It's also super quaint that it's all trimmed out back here. Everything found on the passenger side is also found on the driver's side. Vent window. Handle to hold on to. Seat back profile, it is reclined back here and the seat doesn't dip down nearly that far. It is very comfortable. There's tons, tons of space back here. If you're looking for a car for your family to drive around to different car shows, this would be a really good contender, especially if you had kids. Tons of space back here. Taking a real quick gander under the hood at Ford's Flathead V8, which is nestled inside the engine bay. Generator at the top. Fun fact, Ford's Flathead V8s implement the use of two water pumps, one for each bank of cylinders, six volt battery, oil bath, air cleaner. Take a look at where the water slash coolant pipes enter and exit from. On the positive side, full instrumentation dashboard with massive glove box, which camera fits inside, it just doesn't lock. Plenty of space in front and rear. Well-appointed car for its class and price point. Mohair interior, crank out windshield, in-body trunk against it. Not much, just know that the Ford Flathead V8 was prone to overheating and vapor lock issues. All right, now it's time for Would You Rather, two scenarios today. Which one of these would you rather have? 1936 Chevy or 1936 Ford or 1936 Plymouth? I'm going to leave this here for a minute. If you need more time, feel free. Pause the video. On to the second scenario, 1936 Willis or 1936 Ford or 1936 Graham, I'm going to leave this here for a minute. If you need more time, feel free. Pause the video. All right, now it's time for Name That Tune. First person to get both the name of the band and the song title correctly in the comment section will have their comment pinned to the top of the comment section. A little bit of a hint. That was my dad's favorite band. Thank you all so much for coming out and watching this. If you'd like to get in touch with me with maybe some information of Fiero or Fiera V8 or anything else that you would like to get in touch with me for, you can shoot me a comment in the comment section below, or you can always send me an email at what underscore it's underscore like at a lost, mostly forgotten web provider, yahoo.com, if interested. Thank you all so much for everything that you guys bring in the comment section. Until next time, toodaloo.